Welcome to the kitchen, Velocity RC Cars Magazine. Here I am, sitting at my table, tree in the background. And I'm building something that you probably will never build. Why? Because it's limited production. I think it's already sold out. I could be wrong, but you had to sign up for this. And if you're lucky enough to pay $400, you got a Team Associated RC10 Classic Clear Edition kit. What is that to you? If you're old, like I mentioned in the intro to this, uh, on the, just the unboxing, it means you could buy something that honestly is one of the greatest cars ever. What it did for the hobby is beyond even the later cars that I would consider more important, but important to RC and racing and the movement that this helped lead is why you would buy it. In modern times, you wouldn't buy it. First of all, it's clear plastic. I don't really think it's made the run. It's limited edition. Probably not going to make replacement parts. I think they listed some if you're dumb enough to actually drive this. Wonder Woman car. Uh, but other than that, you're gonna watch me talk about something that you can't build, really, unless you find someone and pay more, or they re-release re -release it again. Re-release. So, there's a couple things that <laughs> I kind of remember from doing this 1988. So I don't know how many years that is. Can't do that math. I had a minor in calculus. Can't do that one. So one of the things I remember is, because I was a kid, is that I built this kit, not on rock and roll, but on little tiny L wrenches like this. First of all, I see a, the tiniest, uh, looks like a hair in there for an Allen wrench. I remember using that on the stupid uh, center gears there, the six gears. A lot of tiny Allen wrenches. Back in the day, <laughs> uh, that's all you had, and to be honest with you, it sucked. So. Uh, plus that they give you these, but minus, oh, I almost uh, added all this set up and I almost was like, yeah, I'm not gonna do it today because I don't have standard wrenches anymore. Everything's metric, which is smarter than my glasses on. Um, so now I had to find to see if I had, uh, what do we need here? 0 0.035, 0 0.050, which I do have. That's a common dumb one now. And a 16th and 332nd. I think I have almost all these wrenches except for this little tiny one, which is the one that I will probably shed a tear about. Because that's a tiny baby, and you have to put a little baby screw into a hole. I, uh, I guess they could have updated it, but why would it be? Because this isn't a re-release. Uh, thankfully, not thankfully, the, they didn't give you the original instructions, which were photographs back in the day. Uh, it did have a lot more text explaining things, which doesn't anymore. Now it just point, do this dummy, and then do it. Um, it looks, I have bag A here, get the rest of the bags in here. Uh, they gave you the original tie rods with no turnbuckle, so you get to sit there and hold it with uh, wire cutters again. For your, If you've never done that, what a joy. Get the original driver. But right now, what I'm going to do is get the old bag A out, build it. You ain't going to watch me, I'm just going to cut to the next scene and go, I built this. Why do I keep hearing City on Rock and Roll in my head? But uh, I built it and then show you and then talk about uh, why it was no fun. Because back in the day, Team Associated was fun. But building, uh, compared to modern cars, not so much just because it was so raw. But I'm hoping that they've kind of updated some of the processes and uh, you don't have to suffer like we did back then. But I do see Eclipse. I don't know if you know what those are. Probably going to shoot a couple of those across the uh, room. Hopefully they give you the long tube of them because those things used to fly. And uh, I don't know, you can't find those things. That's why you work on a soft surface. Hopefully they don't bounce and they stay right here. Don't use a black towel, you can't see anything. Uh, yeah, this gets dirty, but at least you'll see things that fall on it. And you know when you're dirty. So let's get to bag A. Uh, you're uh, three away from bag D, which they purposely don't call the D bag. But anyway, Schwenka will like that. Goenka, Charlie. 
All right, I lied to you. I'm gonna film a little bit while I'm building because I always like to talk when I'm dumb because it happens a lot. So back when you used to build this, the screws were Phillips head and soft aluminum. So when you screwed this stuff on with your crappy screwdriver when you're 10 years old, uh, you had a high chance of screwing things up and stripping it. Now they're hex. 332nd, why they didn't just make a millimeters at this point, I don't know. But anyway, who cares? Uh, Cordless screwdriver saves so much time. I mean, I can't imagine doing this stuff like I did with these little wrenches. Like my fingers hurt. No wonder why I burnt myself with soldering irons because I'm dumb. So I do want to say that on the first step, I must screw the whole car. How do I screw it up on the first step? Literally the first screw I put in here. So for whatever reason back in the day, I don't know if you can really see this, but this is the front body mount. And how it's attached to the front kick up plate is just with a screw. Now there were three screws in here, four. I chose the longest one like a dipshit. Uh, and I was like screwing this in and I probably extended the threads twice as long as they were, which I could have cracked the front body mount, which would ruin the whole kit right on step one. So I have to make fun of myself. And I have to make fun of that back in the day, in, instead of just making the plastic the right length, we put washers underneath and put a screw on, but that was to adjust for different bodies, I guess. Um, but that's how we used to adjust things. See, longer screw and, and washers. I am a moron and put the wrong screw in there and almost cracked my first part. Uh, I am not going to build the uh, tie rods until the end because, I mean, I used to do lists of the worst things to do in RC and uh, tie rods are definitely one of them. There's no way around that. Uh, they got better when you actually had tie rods. It's just threaded rod and you have to hold it and thread it in. And like I said, me just talking about this kit that you probably won't ever build is when I was a kid and what we did as little kids and how I ripped my fingers apart doing this because I didn't have tools. I had stuff you bought at Radio Shack. Uh, nobody bought Allen wrenches like this. I mean, you had nice sets of T wrenches maybe, but even then uh, as a child, with no supervision on this stuff, just my friends. Uh, we built the stuff, oh, why is it still in my head? But uh, we built it and it went together and I don't know how I raced it. But uh, anyway, bag A is complete, almost. Put a couple of things on here uh, as I'm doing this and just making sure I'm not screwing it up. Very simple, just attaching the front kick up plate. Back in the day, like I said, if you had the tools that were available as to a child, this would have taken four years. It took me three minutes. Uh, I will say I did use this little wrench because to thread this on, I used it as a holder through the body post pin to use my core of the screwdriver and not rip my fingers apart trying to hold it. So uh, those wrenches did save me. I don't know if I have the right size here. And also a Tamiya wrench from back in the day for the ball studs because I don't know where all my tools are because I don't use them that often anymore. So I am missing things and I have a dumb bag instead of it organized and I, uh, bag B is the front suspension shock tower. And I just kind of want to talk at some of the materials of the day. Like fiberglass was like super technology back in the day. Uh, so you've got a fiberglass front shock tower. These were made back in the day of, I think Delrin, which was like a nylon slash composite, AKA plastic, uh, more durable, flexible, and light. Uh, these were lighter than the stock parts. Uh, hinge pins are here, the stupid little eclipse. Uh, so one of the cool things, and I, I kind of talk about this, and I think this might be the theme of my whole video, if you hang around and listen to me babble for as long as this video will be, is that what you started with back in the day was a very capable car for the time. Um, but as times changed and the technology changed, it rapidly went forward. It's not like today when you see a new kit come out and you can't tell what the difference is. Uh, this was the day of you'd show up and there was, the car was, every part was different. I mean, as a kid, you started with basics. Uh, the front uh, steering rack in the front just rides on the screws. It doesn't have anything. Uh, you would upgrade that to a ball bearing steering. MIP, ANL. Uh, feel free to comment in any of the videos where you see of the stuff, the parts, the aftermarket parts that you had. Uh, you'd buy those aftermarket parts and you were the happiest person on earth when you got them. Like, I still remember getting my MIP front ball bearing. I think I had MIP. Uh, so you would change that. You get uh, to this technology when they changed the arm design. We went from short arms and then the arms started to get wider. 
uh, you'd have long arms. You'd change the shock towers. I remember uh, Masami probably started this trend when he showed up to a world's event and he had rear shocks on the front. So he had these massive rear shocks on the front. Everybody's like, holy shit, I need some f shocks in the front longer. We did all that every time. And it was amazing because you would evolve this car from what you bought to basically, I think you had a few screws. And we'll talk about that as, as I walk through this building all the stock parts and kind of what I remember, what I changed it to, because this, this car hung around with me for a while as I morphed it into off-road to on-road and all this weird stuff as a kid. Um, but right now this bag is probably gonna whip through, uh, except for these little Eclipse that I'm gonna swear at and bag B, B, <laughs> biatch, I guess. Uh, building this kit for me is just kind of a little bit of a trip down memory lane and it's confirmed a couple things. Eclipse suck. Uh, they used to give you little black ones that were kind of spring steel. Uh, I feel like they were better ones. These are like pretty shiny ones and they don't seem to have that same snap that I'm looking for and it reminded me that I'm old and I can't see them. So I needed to get some glasses. It's a nice reminder. Like, hey, you suck. Can't see anymore. Um, and again, I'm gonna bring up, I really can't believe that we used to build this shit with uh, L wrenches because some of these screws are like half an inch long. It would be about 15,000 turns on an Allen wrench. And to be honest with you, you would probably swear more than I did with the just getting the stupid Eclipse on there. I put two, four, six, eight, eight Eclipse on. So there was at least 16 times I said the F word and then uh, swore it myself because I needed to get glasses so I can see what I was doing. One of the, I guess I would say tricks of Eclipse is to have a sharp edge like a screwdriver to push them on. Building this really makes you appreciate modern kits, to be honest with you, and modern tools, because uh, 84, you would have been a millionaire to have this Makita, which realistically you probably still have to do now because it is expensive for a driver, but it's worth it. Electronic clutch works great. It's not too fast, because one of the things you do not want to do with screws is Put it in like you're drilling a hole. One, you'll heat up the plastic, weaken it, and you can also strip everything out. One of the things I'm not doing is, and I don't know why they didn't include this, to be honest, is for 400 bucks, I think you could have put some Loctite in here. I am never gonna run this car, so I'm not really worried about it, but let's be real here, come on. You make the Loctite, charge me 400 bucks for this thing. Uh, you know, do it. And uh, I just learned that you probably should have put those in before. And now I have to use a stupid L wrench because I'm dumb. I'm not sure if in one of my clips that I did that I talked about making sure that my mic was working. Then I may have to dub in me like Bruce Lee movies. So, uh, after my bag B, Mikey no worky, Mikey no like. So whatever I said that was purely amazing about building this tranny, uh, I have to do over. And the jokes won't be his just flying off. Now I have to recreate them, which, uh, two things. I did a political tranny joke about this. Was it funny? I don't know. Some people get mad. Anyway, six gear transmission. I don't know if I really talked about it. By the way, continuity wise, this is the next morning. Tree's off, my hair's a little longer, drinking coffee. Welcome. So I built this six gear transmission and I don't know if, if this came out and I have to go back and watch what I said, but uh, you know, after building this, I'm pretty proud of very young Derek because he built this hot pile of garbage. And I'm not saying that, that this was garbage in the day. Um, but in modern times, 
this isn't the easiest little six gear transmission to build. First of all, I, I'm going to go over these. I have eight tiny reindeer. Probably more than eight. No, it might be eight. These little screws with the .035 Allen wrench, uh, if you can actually, oh, this one almost bites. If you can actually get them to work, you have to thread them into very hard plastic. With this tiny thing, it is the dumbest thing, smartest at the time to hold the bushing in. Uh, dumbest thing now because they're way too small. I don't, I can't believe I built this when I was a kid. I'm still impressed with myself. What I'm going to tell you now is if you ever buy this kit from me, if it's online for sale, I did not put them in there. Don't run it. This is just faux show and I wouldn't trust it because those, those aren't in there. Not going in. The other thing I realized after putting this together, and I do have to take this apart, is that I didn't really understand how the upper half of the ball diff seated into each other. And I read it more thoroughly last night because I'm like, man, this is really crappy. It doesn't even spin. Then I realized that my shaft is off. Get older, it's off. Leans one way. Uh, way too much slop. And after reading that again, I'm supposed to hammer the tube into each other. Into the other tube. Which I did not do. So I'm going to take it apart and then kind of smash it a little bit. But when I pull it out, it actually spins much easier. And I still don't really have any diff action. I got it last night, the turn, but so now I can take it apart. I had a discussion with my uh, girlfriend last night about, oh, I can get it to move, how this was a nostalgia kit for me. That's what I built when I was like 10 or 12. And then I couldn't believe that I could build this kit. And uh, she made a very valid point, is that when I was a kid, I had smaller fingers. Um, this was something, one of the most amazing things in my life that I have got. And I didn't care if my fingers bled or I burnt myself or whatever it took to build this kit, I built the kit because this was my pride and joy. So I agree with that. I have much less patience, pa patience as an adult. I guess. I think I have more, to be honest with you. I'm very patient at this point in my life. Uh, but I do get annoyed much quicker with stuff that I'm like, what the hell? Man, I'm having some problems with this. Not the build. I made little problems with the build. I was filming and someone texted me and shut my video off. So not only did I lose audio, now I lost 10 minutes of me babbling again. And I'm going to tell you, like, losing babble for me is it's really not that important. Anyway, my entire rant of off-camera to myself and my dog sitting behind me was basically uh, me saying that it's funny that in, a mo in modern cars, chassis tweak is so important. Like, we've created tweak stations and stuff where we make sure the chassis isn't twisted and everything's, you know, level and playing straight. And on this car, you actually bend the chassis to fit the bulkhead and the transmission doesn't meet... Uh, chassis and it's bolted to it uh, and in the instructions missing checked a few times it doesn't show these two washers and I remember this from a kid having two washers back here because I also probably bent the back which would tweak the whole transmission and suspension so I don't want to make fun of everybody but man instructions are hard because when you're involved in things too much you lose the hey uh, I did this wrong because it becomes natural it's like spelling and you know you autocorrect stuff in your head but when someone reads it you sound like uh, you never went to school or uh, spoke words before. So D-bag was pretty simple. It was just the bulkhead, shock tower, tubes, body mount with a nine foot screw through it again. Uh, just be careful not to tweak the chassis. And I did make fun of myself for a good 10, not 10 minutes, for most of this, so now it's weird, it's fine, that I really don't like this transmission. And that at the time, for the times, it might have been grand, great, wonderful, but we quickly went away from this to a more logical, easier to work on, better everything. And that's the whole thing is, you know, period correct, this was great, but where we are today with how cars build and the perfect, they're not perfect, but they are pretty damn close to building with your eyes closed. You know, you don't have to worry about 
e-clip direction for tiny little screws that shouldn't be on any kit this size. Uh, six gears not lining up and creating a cogginess, but right now it actually works, except one side doesn't. Uh, and, I, and I know it's those four screws and the bushings aren't pushed in all the way, so it's, it is what it is. It's never gonna run, so I'm not gonna sit there and worry about it. If these screws went in, and I would have faith that I can get them in without stripping out that stupid Allen wrench, it would be better. I know that, but she will sit on the shelf reminding me that when I was younger, I didn't give a flying shit that the car wasn't perfect. It was perfect to me at the time. And I don't know if I feel it now, only in that I feel like I suck because I can't build this transmission. And I would take it apart and fix it, but it's, she's, a, she's a, a bitch to get apart and I don't really want to take it apart again. You have to take the whole thing apart. You have to separate the, the diffs on the outside. You have to take the car apart. Anyway, we're going on to uh, rear suspension, which should be fairly easy. We got dog bones. We got the springs, uh, bushings, you know, kind of comical, but I guess in the clear sense, they don't really snap in. Uh, in the sense of being clear. Rear suspension ish, the arms. Uh, not very complicated. The roll pins, uh, they kind of went for nostalgia. One of them I did have to crush to get in there. Uh, we went from back in the day, roll pins where you had to like put them through a vise to get them in to ones that when you took the wheel off, they slid off and you lost them. Uh, you probably prefer this one, but we solved that with set screws. The only thing that I could say is that there is nothing more frustrating yet satisfying when you get that stupid little e-clip to do a nice snap onto the pin. It's like, I want to kill everything in this car and smoosh it. And then you hear clink and you're like, ah, oh, that was great. That's an e-clip. But I would trade everything on earth, not have e-clips on cars again. So my shirt will change next time because I got to run out. Not that you guys are following this, it's just one video, but in terms of me and the day, I do this in segments, so uh, I don't burn myself out. Not really, I just have the, don't have time, and I'm like, okay, I got an hour, let's build some stuff and do a video and do it six times because I don't push record. Or the sound stops. Because I should have had this car down. I pretty much could have had the car down. In hindsight, I probably would have built those dumb tie rods first because now my dog bones fall out because they're not, um, the next step is tie rods. But if I had them all there, I could snap all this together and it wouldn't be floppy. I could have everything together. These springs that are holding the dog bones kind of pushed against the transmission uh, are pretty stiff. And back in the day when you lost this, you used a big pen. So that's uh, the nostalgia trick from back in the day where you're like, I don't have little dog bone springs until you bought CVD. See, look at all the options that became a line. Could you imagine that, you know, I guess MIP trademark CVD, uh, constant velocity drives. Anyway, they were the ones that came up with a lot of option parts in the beginning and then they became the car. So kind of eliminated themselves from the equation. So it's crazy business model, right? Just like when we used to have, uh, you can only buy titanium turnbuckles from one company and then now they come in the box and nobody cares. I had to skip ahead a few steps only because sometimes the video slows me down. So, plus it was a mess around here. I had to make sure that I everything cleaned up. But anyway, I'm at the final, my final thoughts. The reproduction RC10 world champion Roar National Champion Clear Edition kit is a trip down memory lane. For some of you, there is no memory because you never raced this. You just raced the farther, oh, newer versions, which is smarter. But to build this is just to kind of go back through history and say, like, it's like looking at a classic car. It's, it's amazing for the time. It's amazing if you had one back then, because that's what I think about when I had this and how I built this. And my thoughts are, it's not as great as I remember, only because we're so far advanced. It's like having a computer from 1980 to a computer today. It's just not impressive. I mean, it's impressive. 
My issues with this reproduction is, is this uh, clear plastic is much harder than the nylon that you used to build. So for instance, I have to make sure this is in here. The front shocks are held in with hinge pins or pins. Uh, there is a tiny set screw again. Granted, I don't have for some reason, I believe an 050 screwdriver or a Allen wrench somewhere. So I can't really get in it and I tried using the stupid doofy little L wrench like I did when I was a kid. It's impossible. It's too hard for how small it is. So while they reproduced this car sort of how it was exactly back then, although I do feel that the center drag link wasn't a tie, a tie rod back then, but I could just be not remembering. Um, they could have changed a couple things to make it easier. First of all, those set screws could have been bigger where you had a real wrench to go in there. 1.5, whatever equivalent, 1 16th or whatever would have made a night and day difference because this pin slides in and out. Like I probably lost it three times trying to get that in there. And I'm not going to try to get it until I get a real 050 wrench. So don't move it around. Uh, the tie rods or threaded rod, uh, you do have to measure, which I didn't have my caliper out, but I'm pretty, I'm not too upset about my, my angle there. Uh, this just goes to show you that how dumb things were back in the day is like you literally had to take this off and adjust and tie rods one, one of your biggest adjustments and That's why everybody upgraded them and that's why Lunsford and uh, Who else made them somebody else Made titanium turnbuckles, but anyway, that's how they became so popular just selling tie rods to titanium turnbuckles or aluminum or anything to everybody on earth that had one of these cars um, It's just cool looking back to see how everything used to be and remembering how the time was to change every part of this car. I mean, I went through in my history of it is race this, I got arms, like a shock tower, I have uh, ball bearing steering, uh, longer shocks, longer shock tower, CVDs, changed the transmission, changed uh, all the tires, obviously put bearings, eventually changed the chassis, went to trailing arms when those were popular. It was like, you hung on to this for years. Uh, not like today's cars is basically you build a new one and then when the new kit comes out you go you know sell it to somebody else that doesn't know uh, so that's kind of where I am like I mean for, for if you're watching this video and you're at this point and not asleep or just forgot about it you're probably not gonna buy this car this is for someone you know I mean obviously like me I think I paid 300 bucks for this thing the price on here Forget what I paid but if you're looking and say, oh, I want an RC car and that one looks cool, don't buy this one. This is a, a nostalgia collector's kit. Uh, you really don't ever want to run it. Uh, I don't know if they're ever going to, you know, if the replacement parts are going to be gone at some point. So if you're looking at this and want a, something to build, buy the new one. Whatever B6 or whatever the heck they, we are on, get that one. And if you want to build it just to be a model, that one's even better to build as a model because it just goes together like way better. Better, better, better. Um, that's, I don't know how else to sum this up is, thank you for watching this build and having me just think about how I was a kid and I'm still amazed that I built this with L wrenches because I, th I think I mentioned this in there, the idler, the middle gears, the idler, I guess they're called in the transmission, do not, do not have the screws in there because those things have the smallest set screws or cap head screws ever in the Allen wrench and the plastic's too hard, but I did that when I was a kid. So I must have had way more patience. Uh, and the transmission is notchy. But again, for the time, it was good. Now it's, now it's not, let's be honest. Uh, but I liked building it and I liked the way it looks. Uh, I trim the body, I get my, get my Dremel out and kind of round off some of the edges. And just like before, it doesn't really fit perfect. You, if you cut on the lines, it kind of gets jammed on there, but I'll figure that out. And the wing doesn't actually have the uh, dimples where to put the that on there, which I thought was strange. But anyway, that's probably how it was back in the day. I don't know. Mine was really ugly when I painted it. It was basically bubblegum pink with a like similar blue color stripe down here, which was the hot colors of the time when it was all fluorescent splatter paint and stuff. Um, yeah. So if you're looking to buy a kit, uh, buy the new one. If you're looking or found 
one of this as a collector or you know just wanted to get something that you had as a kid or couldn't afford as a kid it's actually less affordable now i think um but it was a good time only because it kind of just brought you back to i don't want to say the simpler times but i mean we raced in dirt with these puppies right here not this we basically race on towels now it's great or pavement whatever it is what it is that's where we are in terms of rc racing rc10 clear kit collectors sitting on the shelf for the rest of its life uh i'm gonna put stickers on it i think i may like it says a thing on there i think i may scrape it i don't know looks like they kind of did something like that on there too on the box it kind of just scotch brighted the whole body so it's actually just kind of clear scuff leave the windows clear and slap some stickers on it but anyway that detail stuff's not important i think this video is too long but anyway i don't know if it's actually going to be any good most of the time it's not i don't think maybe i said one thing funny i don't i don't even know anyway velocity rc cars magazine ish i don't know what we are i do some videos of weird stuff uh you can still just like the video it's cool and uh, we'll have another video soon. And uh, I don't even know if, it's like, nobody watches this in order, so it doesn't even like, you didn't know that I didn't do a video recently, but I have it. So let's get back to it. Catch you on the flip.